I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 2nd of October 2022. This year has flown by and welcome to my vlog of daily life here in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm out for a little jaunty walk. I have to say jaunty every time I'm wearing this fedora because it's a jaunty cap. I like it. Uh, this is my Jack Wolfskin, which again, Jack, why aren't you supporting the channel? Today, we're going to be talking about what you do to approach and deal with real estate here in Nicaragua because we've talked about why I don't recommend using a buyer's agent and we've kind of harped on that a bit. It's difficult not to, partially because I think it's a big deal and partially because no one ever believes me, uh, even when we present the logic as to why it's just a problem. Regardless of any individual people, it's just a mechanism thing. Like it doesn't work, things don't work here the way that you expect and there are some problems. And the one of those problems, the key one, is that any agent approaching a seller is going to expose the fact that you are not a local and you are going to start getting gringo prices. Even if that agent is local, we don't use agents in Nicaragua, so they know instantly that you've engaged an agent, therefore you are uh, not Nicaraguense. And that means there is potentially a lot more money to be gotten from you and negotiations will be based on that. So, lots of reasons. So the question came up, obviously and lots of people have asked but someone asked it today i will attempt to fill this void with the question right up here we will pause for a minute and ponder that okay and uh, so i want to answer that very very quickly before that though it is sunday and i am uh, at home today, um, nothing, nothing too huge. Uh, Dominica returned from Managua and we are hanging out today. We went out for lunch. We tried to go out earlier, but it ended up being a like 11 o'clock or 1130 downpour. We're like, uh, no, but then it cleared for a little bit. So we ran up and went to, uh, Libelula, which is a cafe really close to us up on Ruben Dario, uh, in, um, on the main stretch on the West side of town. So she's actually never Ever been there that we have a, a really nice cafe really close to the house it's a little bit weird that she's just managed to not go there but they have great food and really good coffee and it's a beautiful little spot uh, and so we hung out and got tuna fish salad sandwiches uh, and coffee it was it was nice and it rained while we were there so we managed to to eat while it was raining which was which was pretty cool if uh, you're wondering where I am I am just below the church here in Laborio at this really cool house that I show from time to time. I'm about one block away from the Maxi Pali. Uh, and so the rest of the day was pretty much just hanging out. Tonight, uh, it was more Stranger Things with the girls. Other than that, I worked all day. Uh, the girls wanted to do their own thing. Uh, Dominica and I hung out some, but she had a lot of things she had to do as well. Um, I'm gonna turn around and film. This is the never ending hole in the street. This is the biggest, so normally here, in Leon, they're really good about fixing the streets and stuff. Like, it's not really a problem. Sometimes they get damaged. It's a very harsh environment for roads because of the storms and the flooding and everything. But, uh, and, we, and we use pavers or cobblestones. The cobblestones never go anywhere because they're awful. The pavers, they will get messed up, but it's really easy to fix. So you see people fixing them all the time. I've shown some on the show. This one spot though, every month, this goes from completely fixed to complete disaster. I wanna show how this is currently. This is the middle of the road. Right? Those are huge chunks. That hole, I have no idea what's wrong. This thing turns into a gaping hole and then they get a whole new cover for it. It goes to, you know, quote unquote, brand new. And then it goes right back to whatever thing they put over it collapses into it. And we start the entire process over again. This has gone through a cycle of at least five or six times. Some of which I've shown on the show since we moved here not to move to Nicaragua, just move to Leon. And and because I wouldn't go down the street until I lived really close to it. So it's it's crazy how rapidly it's just a, a matter of weeks from the time they replace that until it is completely destroyed, falls into the hole, becomes a gaping hole. They put something over it and they start the process again. What? I can't figure out how anything could, could fall apart so quickly. And nowhere else in the city am I seeing this. It's just that one. It's like the 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 I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that was our day. Hung out, watched, watched Stranger Things with the girls tonight. We are, uh, we wrapped up the first season. We are on the second season now uh, and going through that. Luchana is liking it quite a bit. She's very frustrated trying to watch shows with the dogs because no matter what we do, the dogs, one, need to go out at an unbelievable frequency uh, in the evenings when we try to watch a show. And 
they, they are determined to have their dog play time while we're watching the show. So they're all over the place, in our faces, making noise, jumping up on top of everybody. And Luchana does not like dogs jumping on her while she's trying to do things. So not a lot of patience for that. So she finds that pretty frustrating, but she really likes Stranger Things. She's enjoying that. Um, she is like me, that she's very frustrated with a lot of the characters and, and has a problem finding a good protagonist because they're all so rotten to each other so much of the time. And... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite as bad. She's, well, I don't know. We're probably both about the same. But she definitely gets a, I need a protagonist in a show or I can't identify problem from me. Uh, if there's just no character that I, I care about, it makes it very difficult for me to watch a show. With Stranger Things, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I really like the show. But um, that she can identify hey, there's no good protagonist in this, is a really great thing. Of course, Steve Harrington is the great protagonist. He's really the hero of the show, if you have watched it. If not, go watch it. Um, it's also really cool because she really, this is more like Dominica, she really approaches um, the show in a literary fashion. So even in the very first episode, something will happen and she just goes, well, I bet that's foreshadowing, right? She's 11 and she's instantly identifying relatively subtle foreshadowing in in a show like Stranger Things, like, I don't know how many high school students who have studied literature actually will be able to pick up on, on some of the, the cool foreshadowing that's going on in these things. Like, they, they're, they're often quite subtle. And she just nails it, just like that. It was really, and, and on her first time, so she isn't like, oh, I know what's going to happen for sure, and I think this is, no. She instantly is like, oh, yeah, I know what's going on. Uh, so, um, so how? How do you approach? Because you don't have, or, or in the in this scenario where you're asking this question, how do you approach to ask about houses here in Nicaragua if you don't have a buyer's agent, or assuming you don't have a buyer's agent whose job it is to do that for you? Because that is, if you're in the United States or, or in a normal uh, market, it is your buyer's agent who handles all of that stuff, and that makes it pretty easy for you. You just say, here's the things I'm looking for, and they deal with everything. They find the houses that you want to look at. They arrange looking at them. They find out the prices. They get a hold of the owners. They do all of that stuff. And so you're, if you don't have a buyer's agent, you're left with a pretty big gap in your mechanism for looking at houses. And understandably, that's a very scary gap to have. And I think that's why so many people, even when you explain, here's the Here's the financial and pre market pressure and logical reasons why a buyer's agent might not be something you want to use. Still turn to them and say, well, I don't know if I'm going to listen to that because I really feel I need one. That, that scary gap is certainly a part of that. So what do you do, right? It's great. Okay, fine. That's the one. Okay. You can tell us what not to do, Scott. Tell us what to do. This is generally a problem that I have. I work in IT. One of my, one of my big things I do for business is I'm a naysayer, right? And that's, that's actually a thing, corporate naysayer. And uh, one of the things I do for a lot of businesses is, or a lot of people who are looking to invest is, is they'll run business ideas by me. And I'm really good at pointing out huge gaps in business planning, right? Oh yeah, that's a neat idea, but you're not thinking about your customer base. It's too small or you have no way to market that. Your potential customers are not looking for that, or they can't afford it, or uh, that's not legal in that space. Or the, you know, I can point out, because I've been in business for a really long time, and it's easy for me to see where the, where the, the, the really obvious mistakes are, right? The things that people, and, and it's important to have a third party do that, because uh, when it's your idea, and I know this is true for myself, if I come up with an idea, I have an emotional tie to that idea and I, I want to overlook gaps if I can. And so we all do this. It's very easy to be like, oh no, I came up with this business idea. It's gonna make me all this money. And as long as no one convinces me not to do it, I will make all this money. And that's not how it works. You will actually lose a bunch of money if you don't do proper analysis and know what you're doing. And so protecting yourself early on from doing something very foolish is very important. And that's something that I'm very good at when it's not my idea. Uh, so I'm, I'm often brought in to do that. Um, and people get frustrated by that because I have a lot of don't do this. And I say, well, well what, what do I do? Like, I don't know. I'm a corporate naysayer. I'm here to protect you against bad decisions. I can't make all your good decisions for you. I can't be creative and come up with every business idea that you should do. Because if I had those, 
I'm not going to give them to you, right? No one is. You need to just give me money to invest and I'll go do them myself. Now, I'm not asking for investment money because I don't have those good ideas. But if I had them, it's just a theory, right? I don't have them or I would have found a way to get money and have already done them. So don't get excited. <laughs> but, but that's the, you know, it's, it's important, to, you know, it's easy to come up with bad ideas. If you could come up with bad ideas all day long, right? Anybody can. It takes no effort at all to come up with either intentionally or just be lazy and come up with bad ideas ad nauseum, right? And then being able to shoot them down is very important. Coming up with good ideas is very, very hard. So it's important to come up with ideas. It's important to be able to discuss those ideas, but it's important to evaluate them and learn from, oh, that's why that idea won't work. I'll, I'll learn that for next time. Oh, there's, there's no people in the area. No one can commute there. It's too far. So that makes, okay, okay. Now, next time when I have an idea that has that same problem, maybe I'll identify it. Great. Now it'll make it easier for you to come up with a good idea, but the number of good ideas are few and far between. All that's to say, there's a really common problem when working with me that I have a tendency to be like, don't do this thing. But everyone's like, but what do I do? I have to do something. Okay. So in real estate, how would you approach it here? What is the mechanism you would actually use instead of the assumption of the buyer's agent? Excellent, excellent discussion point. So the first thing that you need is going to be to actually engage uh, the property owner or the property representative. Now keep in mind, again, when I'm saying don't use real estate agents, that is buyer's agents. That's the person that represents you. As a buyer, you absolutely can engage a seller's agent because they are the representative of a house, right? To you, they're not an agent. To you, they are the representative. To you, an agent is the buyer's agent. Whether or not as a seller you should have an agent is a different discussion, and that does not apply to the people asking this question. So in order to engage the seller's representative, which could be the seller themselves or whoever is representing their property, you re the, the thing that really needs to happen is you need someone who is local and is believed to be local. Both things probably need to be true. If they were believed to be local but weren't, I guess that might be okay, but that's probably foolish because there's a bunch of information they're not likely to have and, uh, and, and the chances that they will really pass for local is very low. Even people who are local but have a lot of experience in other countries often are not considered local and it's very difficult for them uh, to pass as local, which creates the same problem for them. So, so this is a very touchy scenario because it's not like the US where 0.01% of people looking to buy or sell a house in any given market may be foreign. And if foreign, that they're coming from a situation almost certainly vastly stronger economically than the local one. Here, the chances that someone who is buying or selling a house is foreign may be one in 10, and the chances that they are coming from a stronger economic situation may be 90 or 95%. And so it's a completely different set of numbers and a completely different set of concerns. In America, if you are selling a house, you don't even consider the possibility that you are selling it to a foreigner, let alone a foreigner with significant financial resources above and beyond what you would normally expect. And you wouldn't be thinking of them as someone who is buying a low cost house generally um, because it's in the US. Here, when you're selling a house, everybody has a hope that they're selling it to a foreigner, that the foreigner has deep pockets and is going to decide to, it's just the house that they want or it's the one that's available and they are willing to spend some amount above market, 10%, 1000%, something in that range, for real, something in that range. And so because of that, because everybody is thinking about that, because everybody is hoping for that, Yes, if you're dealing with a house in a deep in a barrio with almost no um, association with, uh, with, a, with a tourist area or whatever, yeah, there's some chance that they're going to be surprised that a foreigner may show up. But everyone's kind of looking for it. Everyone is aware of those mechanisms who is selling property. And so if there's a hint that a potential buyer might be a foreigner or representing a foreigner, instantly everything is going to change and your ability to negotiate and the prices you are told and the information you are told are going to be very much based on their belief that you are a foreigner, whether or not it is true. Before I move on, I want to show this is a beautiful corner and it's a spot that I very rarely walk to and stand at. 
I come a different direction all the time, and so you see it from a different way. But this house, I just love. So first of all, it goes way back there to where the people are sitting, and it has this gorgeous corner with a little, and it reminds me of like a little British village, and this beautiful garden thing overgrown in the front. And I'm pretty sure there's a little shop on the side, uh, but it's, it's a really cute spot. And, and from where it is, the tree-lined street that it goes down is great. Um, unfortunately, this one's not for sale, or it would be a perfect one for somebody because it is gorgeous. And it is a shop. It is a, oh, it's actually the liquor store. I knew it was something. Um, uh, so you really have to avoid that. So you have to, in order to get a good price, to ever know what good prices even kind of look like, you need to have someone who's going to pass for local come in and ask for that. And it just, it just has to be a local. And you don't want probably a local who is uh, incredibly affluent, who is uh, access to way too many resources because they're gonna carry themselves differently. And you want someone who, you know, blends in in the barrio, who grew up in one of the bar, could be anywhere in the country, but you really want that. That's, that's what you're looking for. And so how do you get that? Um, in general, right? So one, I don't recommend buying property sight unseen from far away. There are exceptions. There's always an exception to almost everything. Um, certainly to that, I have done it probably foolishly, but I've done it knowing the risks um, and tried it a number of times and got really, really uh, attempted to get burned, right? Not, not attempted by me, attempted by people trying to take advantage of me because I did that, which led to a lot of the things I know about the market. But luckily was, was able to buy fortune or kismet or whatever was protected from that. And now I'm trying to pass. Oh, there's a puppy. Look how cute. Oh my gosh trying to pass on the lessons I have learned to you guys so that you don't have to go through the same thing and take the risk of not being protected in the way that I was. Um, so, so the best thing to do, the absolute best thing is to come here, spend time, get to know locals, have a network of friends and know the neighborhoods. You don't want ideally a third party going out and showing or, or learning about neighborhoods for you. You don't want me telling you about neighborhoods. You may want me to tell you, hey, here's like 10 neighborhoods in Leon. Here's what I think of them. I show some, here's where they are on a map. Great, like, yeah, watch my show, of course. But, but I can't give you that really strong feel of this is a neighborhood, this is a barrio that I want to live in. I can tell you which ones I want to live in, but I can't do that for you. That's something where, yeah, watch my show, talk to some people, get some ideas of neighborhood. Oh, I like Sutiava. You might also like Saragossa. It's a little bit, you like Laborio, Saragossa for sure. Close to El Centro, a lot of this shares a lot of the same things. Okay, I should not skip Saragossa. Good to know, right? Okay, but go walk it. Spend some time there. Stay in a hostel there. Get to know what it's like for you. Is that a barrio you will like? That's something you need to answer firsthand. Oh my gosh, motorcycles and dogs on the road. I can't, I can't, I can't. Ugh. Of course, they were nowhere close. Right, as safe as can be. More doggies in the windows. <laughs> and so, so you want to do that firsthand. And you can do that. You can just walk around. No one's going to, you know, be confused and be like, oh, he's trying to buy houses. No, just walk around, get to know the neighborhood. And then when you have someone you trust locally, and this is how I was able to do it, right? When I first bought property here, it was, I had um, friends I had been working with for years, and when the time came, and, and there were people who knew property, they were able to go out, look at properties that I was interested in, make deals on my behalf very quickly, get the owners, speak to them, right? And handle everything, and including having construction knowledge. So they were able to evaluate the, the structures to say, oh yeah, no, this is a good place. This is a bad place or whatever. This will make sense for you or not. So that was extra advantageous that, that it wasn't just a local who was able to facilitate those things, but it was a local who had a good amount of local knowledge as far as construction, materials, um, location, uh, and all those kinds of things. That helped a lot. That was that was the absolute perfect way to do it. But of course we were lucky to be able to do it. We were able to do it from a distance more or less. But when I say we bought it from a distance, I lived in Nicaragua previously. I had resources because I had lived in Nicaragua previously. I have a business in Nicaragua that had been going on for many years. So I had staff and friends here in country and that made this massive difference and allowed me to do things that, that most people from a distance would not be able to do so. So that is how I overcame it myself. If I was, less involved in that way. I would simply want to move down here, spend the time, get to know the market, 
and and then you would have your own resources to do that. That and and people will do it for free, you know, or you know, buy them dinner or whatever. All you're asking, in general, is for someone to make a phone call on your behalf, have a local conversation, talk to the owner, ask what the asking price is, maybe go look at the property for you, and and come back and say, here's some pictures. Oh, it's great. Oh, I hate it. You know, here's what I think you can get it for, and you're good to go. Right then, once you have that that solid starting point on the price, then at some point, yeah, you're gonna have to look at that property firsthand unless you're really trying to to, to maneuver, and and then you'll make that and you'll be able to negotiate based on you already know the starting prices. You'll probably always overpay by a tiny bit, but you can get it to be a tiny bit and not the huge amounts, the potential of hundreds of percentages that you may easily overpay uh, if you don't have that local doing that. That is the biggest thing. Then, after that local does that, you need to have a trusted lawyer, one that understands real estate, right? It, lots of lawyers do, but there are some that don't. So, so make sure you're getting a lawyer who knows real estate and in many cases, one that knows real estate and immigration, right? If you're hoping in any way to use anything you're doing here, as part of your, your residency process, make sure you have that lawyer first, then a property lawyer, unless they're the same person, uh, your tramite first, and that person will tell you what you need to do and how you need to do it with the property lawyer in order to have it uh, properly applied, if possible, to your residency process, or at least give you the information that you need that things will count, won't count, or whatever, because it's complex and there's lots of ways to, to do these things and a lot and things change over time. You ha that is the only order in which to do things, right? Start with your immigration, your, your residency lawyer, then, then look at properties, then have, and your residency lawyer may get you a property lawyer or, in some, or they could easily be both. And it works out well to be both, but that's, that's the system. Now, some of you, are going to say, but I want to look remotely. I want to look now. I'm not ready to move. I want a place ready for me. I want to get a property and start on things. Trust me, I get the feeling. I have been there. I have been you. I have made decisions based on that. I have lots of friends who have done the same thing. In general, I think that we all end up warning against jumping into buying property. You would not move to the United States, you would not move to Canada and buy property before you got there. You would not get there and buy property the moment that you got there. That's not a great process. Something about the low cost of property here, living in paradise, many people coming here with an eye towards retirement, it makes us more anxious to get a permanent home right away. And it makes us more capable of getting a permanent home right away. And so I think that encourages this kind of jumping the gun process. And there's many people who are like, well, I can't get there to deal with it, but the cost isn't so high that I, I have to avoid it. So how do I work around that? Okay, so I don't advise it, but I know it's gonna happen. And I know sometimes it's necessary. It was necessary for me, or so I claim. Uh, hola! <laughs> Getting yelled at from someone deep in the house. And so, I understand that it's going to happen. So what do you do? You don't have a lot of options. If you don't have your own local connections, you need to find someone who will, who will operate as one. This is pretty difficult if you don't have people here. Um, services for this don't really exist. Um, I've never seen one. Of course, you can just call any random person and be like, hey, I'll give you some money. Can you do this thing for me? That's weird and hard, and how do you find those people even randomly to begin with? It's all very, very difficult. Because of that, I do have, and I hate that this goes into, I actually have people for this, but this discussion has come up a bit, and I have to have these people for myself. Uh, so, something that we're working on is, and we, we are now offering this and, and actively doing this. We have people, you'll see, we've got um, some places being called on, and I need them. So the reason that I have them, let me preface this, I have my new show, Central American Living, in order to do that show, we need to talk to people who own houses, sometimes for sale, sometimes not. Um, so it's a, it's a range of things, but we need to have those conversations and say, hey, we'd like to come film your house. We'd like to get some information about your house. How many rooms? How, when did you get it? What's the decoration? Has this been in your family? Whatever, if that's it, and others, oh, you're selling it? What is the asking price? What is the, what's all the info? What's the, what's the deed situation like? And we gotta spin a little bit here. It's just, 
I don't show these too often. There's lots of cool murals around this city and uh, sometimes I get them. Also this house here with the bamboo up top. Love this house. I'm hoping to show the interior of this one. I know the owner a little bit. One of the advantages of having the world's cutest Boston Terrier is that uh, everyone in the neighborhood knows me because they want to come out and play with my dog. So I know her a little bit just from walking the dog. And uh, so I'm hoping that we can get a tour of this house because it's a beautiful design. It's a nice big house. It's in the middle of the barrio. So it's like, I think it's just a great example, at least on the outside, of things that you could potentially do in this kind of area and do something really, really amazing. I have no idea what the inside's like, of course, but the, the structure of the house has just a ridiculous amount of potential. Of course, it's not for sale. That's just someone's house. But uh, so because I have to have staff who is going to go out and, and arrange seeing houses for us, and because I'm working with seller's agents in places for the same reasons, I'm building up a network of, of information on houses and I'm working on a system for offering services for doing introductions to houses. There's no agency, there's no agents, there's no percentages, absolutely nothing like that. Nothing where we're, you know, being paid to take advantage of you. Just a flat fee for making some calls, getting some information uh, and presenting it as, um, as locals getting information on a house. I have someone following me down the street here. And uh, so that's a service that we're working on. We don't know how to price that yet, because obviously if it's like, oh, I just need info on one place, it's like that shouldn't be very much. And if it's like, oh, I need a lot of info in a lot of places and I want you to walk around and look at a bunch of things, um, that's gonna be different. Is it to just make a call and see if it's available? Is it um, make a call and schedule time, go in and take lots of pictures and video? Uh, that kind of stuff, like we wanna be able to do those things, but really just a concierge service right? Purely gathering information for you, never getting between you and the seller, never acting as an agent, never, um, never doing any of those things that, uh, that I feel don't make sense in this market. We really want to provide something that has a, a concrete value that makes logical sense and is financially advantageous. Obviously it needs to make enough money for us to be worth doing, right? Um, so, and, and I don't want to be in a, you need to use us, right? No, the recommended thing is come down, make some friends and, uh, hola. Lo siento? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, uh, that's the way I recommend doing it, right? It's very much a fringe service that we would recommend coming to someone like us and doing this. But I think some people need this. Um, and especially if you want to move quickly. And I don't know how to, you know, <laughs> it's easy to be like, you need to do this thing. Well, who offers that? I don't know. That's where we've been all this time. Uh, we built this for ourselves. So we're gonna try to start offering that. I have a meeting in five minutes. So I'm watching my watch closely. I need to go. Uh, but that's, so that's kind of, but that's not what I recommend, right? I recommend using your own friends, having a network of trust, spending time here yourself. Not a ton, six months, a year, you will know so much better. But if you need to have someone who's going to walk around, go to specific places, find out what's being listed, maybe ask questions in a neighborhood, make some calls, go take pictures, take video. We're going to offer as a, as a set price, straightforward, making all the introductions and connections business without actually taking a piece of any action. So whether you're getting a house that's $5,000 or $5 million, it doesn't matter because we're just getting paid for taking pictures and making calls or whatever. We're gonna figure that out, but that's that's something we're gonna be offering. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, comments below, ask your questions. Uh, anything you see, there's nothing for sale, like all that place that I walked. And uh, I've got to jump because I have a meeting. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee down below, check the links. And we're just about to start doing the throwback episodes. Not today, but I think we're gonna start tomorrow. Tuesday is my wedding anniversary, 19 years. That is the October 4th. And I will see all of you tomorrow.